Hey everybody, today we are going to do part two of the illustration demo from taking a sketch that you've sketched in a sketch pad, scanning it in, and this time we're going to colorize it using techniques in Photoshop. This is a really great, great efficient way to do a sketch uh, for your comic book or any other illustration type of project. And I learned this technique from some of my various illustrator friends, one of um, which being Victor Davila. Uh, who is a really, really talented illustrator and gave us a great talk in our class um, and so forth. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, basically what I've done is just grabbed a Batman sketch online and I'm going to kind of do some housekeeping here first to start with. All right, now this is a very cool technique because this allows us to actually be able to paint and deal with some transparency as well because right now we have a lot of... Uh, issues going on. The first thing you want to do when you assess a sketch is scan it in. You want to scan it in at a pretty high DPI. I'm thinking anywhere around 300 to 600 or even higher. The higher DPI you have, the, the less pixelization. You can see right now I'm at 200% and you know that's that's about common. At 100% it looks, it looks pretty good. So we need to get rid of some of the tone areas. We want black and white. And to do that, I'm going to kind of do this a little destructively, but that's okay in this case. I'm going to go to Levels, and you want to pull it toward the mountain. So grab the middle level, which is the mid-tone, and pull it toward the mountain. This will darken your lines. Now, as you do that, grab the white tones and kind of, or the mid-tones there, and kind of pull them away. So you're going to adjust. This is going to be different for each drawing. Um, I like to have a little more contrast in my drawing and keep all the the subtle lines. You can see this one will really kind of darken it, but I, I like the gray values that it's getting here. This is a great number. Now this is going to change per your drawing. All right, and you can see up at the top I got some yellow, so I pulled that down a little bit too. All right, when you get it to where you like it, you're good. So go ahead and hit OK. Now, here's a cool method. What you're going to need here is layers, and you're going to need your channels buttons. To find your channels, you would go to Window, and then you would go to Channels, and there they are right there. So those are good both to have. And what I'm going to do is just peel off my, my workspace here and kind of set it up to uh, give me the best success I can have here. All right, I have them right next to each other. And I'm also going to use uh, a new channel here. So the first step is we want to hit Command A or we want to go to Select All or Command A, Control A on a PC. And we're going to do Edit, Copy and we're going to copy this picture and we're going to go to our channels palette our RGB or yours maybe CMYK and we're going to hit the new channel. That's going to give us an alpha channel. With the alpha channel selected we want to go to edit paste or command V. Now once that's pasted in there you're already on your way. Now here's the trick. Here's the cool little trick here. You're going to go ahead and hold the command key down. If you're using a PC you'll hold the control key down. I'm going to hold it down and you can see when I hover over the picture of Alpha 1, you see how I get the little box over there and it says channel thumbnail there? I'm going to click and it's going to select all the white areas. Now this works really well if you're using a normal sheet of paper, nothing with a lot of tooth or texture to it. The more texture you get, the more difficult it is to get rid of the, uh, the, the background here. But once I have that selected, so I hit command click, I'm going to go to select inverse. And I'm going to inverse it. So now it's just going to select all my line work. Now I navigate back and I'm going to create a new layer. And in this new layer, I want to keep the selection active. I want to fill it with black. So edit fill. And then in my case, I could do foreground color, which is that. Or I could do black. It's up to you. Um, also, in a, in a previous lecture, we talked about true black and all fun stuff like that. So if we wanted to, if I double click here, I can go ahead and set this up to be true black, like Victor mentioned in his demo. So I can do that, hit OK. I can, I can add that to the swatch library and call it true black. There we go. And it looks pretty good to me. So now in my swatches, I should have a true black swatch right there I can click on. All right. So now that I have that, I'll, I'll do my new layer here and I go line work. Okay and I'm going to edit fill foreground colors fine fill that in select deselect or command D on my keyboard alright I'm gonna hide the bottom layer 
and you get a really cool effect. You actually get the line work, which is really amazing. And it's on a transparent background, guys. So you can move this around. You could resize this. You have a lot of different options. I mean, obviously, we don't want to go too big, but you know, we could put this in a panel, all sorts of fun stuff. So that's a good start. And what I'm going to do is actually do, again, more house cleaning and call this back up. And I'm going to drag that into that and turn that off. All right. Now we're ready to colorize. Here's where it gets fun. Now, you can be a little messy with this. Um, it's, it's really not going to affect anything too much. What I'm going to do is create a new layer. And I'm going to call, you know, this color fill. Maybe color fill one. And we're going to start selecting areas to paint. Now, you can do a couple of different things here. I'm going to show you a few. Um, I'm going to make this a multiply layer. So whatever I paint, whatever colors I paint on this, you're going to notice that they're, again, they're going to be very, very nicely working with the black areas on the sketch. So now that I have this, think about your brushes. Look at all these different brushes you guys have. Um, we're going to utilize some of these special ones today, um, being that I am using a tablet here. So we'll start with just a simple medium softness brush. That looks about right. And let's see what we get. Now I have my color fill over my line work right now. And what's going to happen is I can start painting. Now if I get over this stuff, it's okay. I can always erase later on. Uh, and, and that's really the great thing about this kind of technique. It's very... Uh, kind of error proof, you know, you can always go back and fix what you need to. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to do this kind of roughly. You'll notice if I put it behind my line work, there's really not much of a difference. So I just tend to keep it, you know, where it's at. And don't forget about your brush size. Now for the fill, I use a normal flat brush. I don't do any kind of brush strokes yet, but I constantly use my uh, arrow keys, so to speak, to kind of work on the uh, line work. This is, at this point, guys, a giant coloring book page. And, you know, just like if you painted a wall, you want to use a bigger brush or a roller for a larger wall. For smaller walls, you want to use a little detail brush. That's what we're doing here, too. So we're going to go in, and we're going to paint his brow. And we're going to give it some highlights and shadows later on in a second here. And when I get really close, I get a smaller brush, work my way up when I get to the bigger areas. So digital painting in, in Photoshop, so to speak, is pretty forgiving, especially if you kind of handle your, your business right away here. And you can see I'm going to go in here and kind of get there. Now, I have a tablet. It speeds up the process. By no means am I saying go out and get a tablet, though. That's that's totally up to you guys. Um, ever, obviously, everyone has their own uh, work methods and whatnot. Whatever speeds up your process, though, is probably something that you know you want to find what you're faster at and what you need to you know take more time doing. And I'm going to switch to my eraser here and make sure I'm on the color fill and kind of go in there and touch up some of these areas. And I keep a relatively harder brush than you guys would normally see me use especially in class, uh, just so I can kind of handle my business, so to speak, and uh, not have this feather action going on. But not too bad. There we go. Clean that up. So that looks pretty good, and we're getting pretty good color. So I tend to switch things. Um, I tend to, I'm going to go ahead and call this skin, and I tend to mul you know do all this uh, to my layers first. I can multiply I can do a lot of things. I could actually use my magic wand tool if I really wanted to. And I could select specific areas. And I would have to do that within the, uh, the line work. And you can see that that does help a little bit. Um, it, it gives me a starting point. Then, when you, then you could paint exactly in there. So let's go ahead and get a skin tone for uh, Batman here. Let's see. Looks pretty good. All right, so with the marching ant tools, you could even go in and really quickly go on top of it, and we'll have to touch this up, but if I hit Command-D to deselect, it gets the large areas pretty quickly, and then all you got to do is really get your lower brush and go there. Now, the multiply works really well because, as you can see, it's really working with those lines. It's really 
enriching the line quality within it. You don't have to use multiply. You know, try your other blending modes, darker color, uh, overlay, things like that. It's, it's going to give you a slightly different effect. And, you know, the main thing you want to do is, you know, just organize, realize where your layers are. You can see I have a little bit of a erasing I need to do on the, on the blue layer here. There we go. That looks pretty good. Go to skin and my paintbrush again. Oops. Paint some of that. Go to color fill. Grab some of those areas. And I'm just working back and forth. Doesn't hurt to zoom in. I'm a huge fan of that, even though I always forget to zoom in. Use my spacebar tool to move things and so forth. All right, let's work on the uh, the yellow uh, bat symbol too in here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to use my magic wand tool. I'm going to get the majority of that. I'm going to add some areas the best I can. You know, you can only add so much. Uh, and let's do a yellow bat. Always name in my layers. And I'm going to use my color swatches because these are pretty definite. They're already up there and I don't have to search for the same color. All right, so I could fill that if I needed to. And uh, still got to set that to multiply because otherwise I won't get my line quality. And then just go in and have some fun. Remember, the harder it is, sometimes the better it is when it comes to digital painting. Constantly change your brush size. Don't get lazy. You know, we're letting the computer do the work for us. All right? This computer is really, you know, doing the grunt work. If we had to hand color this uh, in, in real life, it would take a lot more effort and time to kind of shoot this stuff out, so to speak. All right, so we have that. That looks pretty good. All right, let's do his body work. And I'm just going through the whole method so you guys get the idea. I should paint the yellow layer down here for his belt. I'll get to that in a bit. And uh, let's see what I can do. We'll do a selection. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video um, as I add to this selection here. And I'm going to get some of the main work done so you guys can kind of see it. And I will come back and a little more will be recorded. All right, guys, we're back. That probably took uh, a few minutes for me to kind of figure out the coloring and just get all my layers on and off here. You can see I have a, a few special ones here. Um, and overall, not too bad. I kind of kept my colors consistent. And you can see I, I just had specific areas where I uh, kind of went to town here. The cool thing about this method is uh, before we get to shadows is you can actually change up the look of it. If you go to your line work, line work layer, and this should be called body, and I don't think I put anything in this layer, so I got some weird empty layers. But go to the line work one and go to uh, your, your blending styles and go to the color overlay. What you can do here is really get a pretty cool effect. You can change the, uh, again, the tint of everything. Make this a little darker. I probably would go a little warmer of a color. And get a pretty neat looking kind of look overall to this. So again, give that a shot. I'm just going through my modes here just to see what, what is what. And uh, you could have a really kind of special effect. And always, we can always move this to the top and uh, kind of go from there. So again, guys, you have a lot of options with this method. It doesn't have to be so clean cut, and it's a lot faster than you normally would use uh, to kind of get everything to work. And you can see with the originals um, behind it here, kind of what really intense effect we have. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to add some, uh, basically some highlights and shadows. And the way we did this for Illustrator in the other demo is we did multiply layers and we can do that here too and what I usually do here is I would I'm gonna go ahead and grab all this work and put it in its own folder and call this Batman work and then I'm gonna go ahead and create my two layers and I can have a darkened shadow layer and I can start with a lighten now we've done this in class you can use the the dodge and burn just like you're using this on a photograph 
or we can do kind of what Victor did in the, the lecture. And I'm, I'm going to set mine to multiply, and I'm going to go ahead and get true black here to kind of work with. There it is. And I'm going to paint some shadows in. Now, luckily, I already have a lot of the shadows painted in, but I'm going to do this kind of roughly, and we're going to see what we get. Now, I'm going to have to clean it up. I'm purposely doing this roughly. So let's do... You know, for our shadows, let's get a little crazier. Let's use one of these new um, kind of art brushes here that you have in, in Photoshop. And you can see these are great because they work, especially with my tablet, when I tilt my pen, they kind of work like a real brush. So in this case, um, this one's kind of very line heavy, kind of neat. Let's look at some of the other ones here. There you go. That's a cool one. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to kind of work with these brushes and they give me some great kind of options. And we're going to lay in the light source. And you know, at first glance, guys, yes, this does look pretty intense. Um, but we're going to kind of make it work in a second here. So we're going to say our light source is kind of from above here. Um, deal with some of the areas outside. Kind of deal with the areas here. Maybe Batman has again some shadows coming in here, which he already does. Kind of do it this way. So I lay in my lights, or excuse me, my uh, my shadow sources, kind of the best of my ability, and get kind of a nice thing going. Make sure they're up here too. We can always erase stuff later on, so that's okay. And I have this set to multiply, so what I can do is turn it down like Victor did to a certain percentage, and then I really start getting something kind of nice. I start getting a little more, again, painterly feel to it. So that's one method. 30% um, is pretty good. I can, again, always you know go back to my eraser and, and just kind of gently erase some of these where I was a little rambunctious with them. Um, but overall, you know, not too bad. I'm going to have to clean that up a little bit. Go back to my brush. Switch to my eraser. Make my eraser smaller. All that fun stuff. Okay. So that's how I can get my, uh, my shadows in there. Just a very, you know, simple method. It gives us a kind of a cool result. Same with highlights. On highlights, I'm going to set it to screen. Uh, we'll, we'll go through the blending modes in a second. Let's try another brush. Um... Some of these brushes are, are even new to me, so I have to kind of get acclimated with them. And you can see a ton of airbrushes and, and pencils and stuff like that in there. I just want to see what a pencil looks like. It's kind of cool. Um, let's go with... I don't know. I kind of want some texture, so let's go with this one. And again, right now it's set to screen. It's not doing much. Overlay sometimes works a little better. Let's see if we can't get some areas happening. Now, one of the main reasons is I'm painting with black. When I start painting with white, maybe I'll get a few more looks. And these brushes are pretty intense when it comes to, you know, can you see it? You can see that brush right away. You can see it. Um, if I use like a round brush, it's, it's almost too intense. So let's get back to screen and let's pull this down to 20%. And I'm gonna find the right brush. It's a, it's, a, it's a searching process. That one looks pretty good. So maybe he has a very strong highlight. We're gonna hit the nose a little bit. Batman's light source coming in from this side now. And yeah, it's hitting his chest. In his arms here. We'll go in and paint some more. Maybe it's hitting kind of some of the areas over here. And you guys can see basically what I'm doing is just enhancing the spots. Like some of the spots that didn't have darkening. Again, I'll switch it here and show you. Um, the spots that, did, that were dark, I can again enhance with the shadow brush. The spots that were light, I'll enhance with the dark brush. And it's kind of a nice interplay. And for other areas, then I usually go and do like a fine detailed kind of thing. So I can go in here and kind of darken areas, and then I'll I'll switch my uh, my look here 
go back to white. There we go. Lighten areas and really start to get some uh, some nice blending, some ni nice light sources, and that's extremely important. So overall, I like texture because I feel it has, again, a more uh, painterly look. Some of you may like flatter colors. That's up to you. But, um, you know, just really what I'm getting to, guys, is experiment with these. Like, really have a, uh, you know, have a, a set of brushes that you, you always use and then go in and, and see if you can't, you know, deal with even using, you know, different techniques and, and methods to kind of get the... Uh, a, a new look, maybe a new textured look that you haven't had before. So, we have a lot of options when it comes to this stuff. So, pretty cool. All right, guys. So, that's essentially uh, kind of digital painting 101 when it comes to uh, sketches versus drawing. I hope you guys go ahead and do this and utilize your group members well in your projects mainly because you know this this project especially is very very um it, it's very very important that you guys speed this up because essentially i want you guys to be able to draw one person maybe sketch everything out the other person uh, maybe other 10 people go in and do all the shadows and highlights but it's, you're going to get really nice results and go from again a sketch to something a lot more special and a lot more uh in depth here and that's, you know, removable that you can, you know, scale out a little bit, all sorts of fun stuff. So it's kind of cool. All right, guys. So enjoy this lecture and uh, I will see you next time.